Okay, well, hi, Paul. It's, gr it's great to, to chat with you again. And thank you for taking the time to, you know, come along and answer my questions and also the questions for all the people that, you know, watch my videos online and everything. Well, I, I, I am truly delighted to have the opportunity because you've got an audience of people that I wouldn't necessarily know and I might possibly maybe have something to say for them. Absolutely, yes, yeah, and you know you have a you have a, a great history uh, with with all, all kinds of things that we're interested in. So I'm just going to give a quick overview for the, for the people that haven't found you yet online and and know your history. So mm -hmm. you're Paula Roberts. You're known as the English Psychic. Oh, you're I should let, let me stop you right there. Okay. <laughs> you're, you're in England, and obviously I'm English, and people think, "What the English Psychic?" No, donkeys years ago when I was starting off, yes. um, I was around a crowd of people. And they said, "You should be called the English Psychic." I said, well, that's corny. He said, well, you're not the French pastry chef, are you? <laughs> okay, so there's, there's, there's history to that. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, you're known as the English psychic, and you're in America at the moment. You're based there. And I think you moved there in the late 70s, I believe. I did, yeah, 78. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. And you're a clairvoyant, you're a medium, you're a psychic. You also do some remote viewings. So you're a remote viewer, and you have an international client list. And you were also a very close friend to the late Ingo Swan, who we all know as remote viewers. Yes. But you're also an author, and you also have a passion for ghost hunting as well. And I'm very interested I, I, in hearing about I, that. I do. I, I, um, I have a wide range of whatever it is I do. Yeah, it's it's excellent. It sounds like you have a a great uh, range of skills that you've used over the years. Um, so yeah, well, I'd like to talk about that, and uh, you know, because it's quite a resume you have there, more than people like myself, you know, because I pretty much focus on one discipline now. Yes. Um, so is there anything that you'd like the audience to know about you? Well, I think. I think the one thing I'd like to express is, it sounds very simple, but um, I've never been taught to do anything. Whatever I do, I could do immediately without even knowing what it was. So I don't consider that what I do to be clever. It's not clever. It's something I can just do, which when people ask me for sort of, will I teach or give them pointers or whatever, I can't, I'm not holding out on them, but. I can do it. And I also, I mean, this will be part of a long conversation, but I won't keep it too long, is I have always said yes to an opportunity, even I have the slightest idea what it is. I mean, for example, I met Cindy Adams, who's a big gossip columnist here in New York, mm -hmm. and um, I was doing a television show. It was towards the end of the year, she said, could, she said, could you do the predictions for me for the new year? I said, yeah, sure. <laughs> I could. I mean, so that is also, I've had the... I'm trying to be English. Okay, let's forget being English. I've had the courage to always say yes without knowing what I was letting myself in for, but yes. That sounds familiar. That sounds like my how I've gone in life. I've always taken a job on, even if I don't know how to do it, and then I work out how to do it later on. Yeah, so yeah, fantastic. Exactly. Yeah, we have that in common. Um, before you moved to the US, um, did you have any... I, I, you said you weren't trained. Did you not have any experience or psychic training in the UK? Because it was quite... I, I knew about it because my mother was into it you know, in, yeah. back then. So she was a spiritualist in the local spiritualist church. And there were quite a lot of circle groups in, in my yeah. experience back then. I wondered if you'd experienced any of well, that. Let, 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 me, let me go back to when I was very, 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 very small. I mean, I, say four or five, who knows exactly. Um, I became absolutely aware that wherever you are, like sardines in a tin. I mean, I didn't have the vocabulary, but I knew they were spirit, whatever, what is like one likes one. And that's very disconcerting. Think about that. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, mm -hmm. you've got a huge, and I knew that from the time I was very, very small, but I also had a feeling of very, very deep outer space. And I also knew, and this is again, very disconcerting, that there's no end to it. And the, the human mind can't get around head around the fact that there's no end to it. And then another thing I've known since I was, again, teeny tiny, that I've drowned. Now, I'm not talking about this to anybody because I'm, I'm only a toddler and who would I talk to in any case, but there are things I knew way, always, let's say always. And that must have been a, was that was it hard for you growing up? Because a lot of people, you know, they have these kind of internal beliefs and, and feelings. No, I, they have I, no one to talk to about it. I think that to all intents and purposes, I led a sort of normal enough life. Um, I suppose looking back, I was aware of things, but I wasn't aware that I was, uh, let, let me, I'm rambling. Let me tell you the beginning story of my real journey. Of yes. course, it started yes. earlier that I was living in Chelsea, 
a London one, not the one here. Um, <laughs> I, I was sharing it as a part with several girls and everybody gone out and there was one, one of the girls still there, um, Irish woman, lovely woman, who was addicted to readings. So she came up and knocked on my door and said, Are you busy? And I said, no. Come on down, she said. Went into the living room and she had letters of the alphabet with an upturned glass. So I had never so I didn't know what this was. So she said, Well, you put your finger on it, it spells out things. I'm thinking, okay. Well, it didn't. And then she said, Well, we're at the wrong table. We've got to go to the kitchen, which had a for my table. So by this time I was totally fed up, but I was being polite. Okay, all right, whatever. And it started to move. I knew I had my finger, but I knew I wasn't. So I, I'd had enough by this time. I said, okay feeling very foolish is anybody there and it spelled out Clive and I thought okay I did know somebody called Clive a friend of a friend who'd been killed in a plane crash not long before but I may have mentioned it I don't know so I thought I'll put an end to this I will ask the name of his wife and it spelled out Penelope she hadn't a clue what was spelled out I wasn't pushing anybody now all I can say does is I came I became there was a sense of warmth um uh, presence I don't know what it was it was and Mary kept saying to me you've got the gift you've got that we spent all afternoon you've got the gift you've got the gift I did not know what she meant um but I lived literally around the corner from the Spiritualist Association of Great Britain which was in Belgrave at that point <clears throat> so I trotted off um to look at the young spiritualists didn't learn anything but <laughs> there's a particular there's a particular time there I went to a couple of I don't know what they were, but there was a young man, um, wasn't teaching, well, there he is, psychometry. I didn't know the word psychometry. He had a tray and suggested everybody put in a bit of jewelry or whatever, there were about six of us. So, okay, pick up something, picked up something, and he said, you know, I don't know whether he used the word, let's say he used the word meditate. So I immediately got a man, older man, with a stick, slightly bent over, in front of a row house or terrace house, and I had a pain up my left arm. Okay, so I was sitting to the man's right. He so he started off on the left, he went round to people, and I'm not being rude, I'm not being rude, but everybody else, if they got talked about sort of tinkly music or what okay, yeah. fine. So I came to me and I said, Well, I've got this man, and so on, and he grabbed it out of my hand. He said, oh, that's my grandfather. He died of a heart attack. Then he turned his back to me, which is very hard because we were in a little tiny attic room. And, and then I thought, I don't know, but I think there's something, I think I got it. Something wrong with this picture. So that was the end of that. Mm -hmm. So did I, would I have trained? Um, and let's not talk about the tremendous jealousy in the field. Let's keep that. <laughs> but I, I, I mean, I was innocent. I didn't know anything about anything. I thought, I don't know. I think I got it there, but what do I know? Well, it sounds like you have. I mean, you had a... A great long career so far. Yeah. And then I've got some funny stories. I had a friend and she and I started to look around and see what was available, which in London, there was plenty of available. I've got a funny story. <laughs> we, we were meeting all sorts of people. And one man came around to her apartment. Um, and what he said, he was, we called her a witch. Wait for it. Well, what he wanted us to do is to meet with a group of people in his garage and dance around naked. <laughs> we, we thanked him very much. And we, we'll get back to you on that. <laughs> yes. yeah. So I looked around a lot of things. I um, I didn't find anything. Certainly I wasn't being trained in anything. So in some ways I was leading a perfectly normal life, but it's probably relevant to say how I arrived in New York because yeah. now, I've got two answers to that. I was living with an American in London and decided he decided we'd come back here. So I joined him and we were down in South Jersey. Never mind. Um, but to pick me up from GFK, we stopped in the city. Yep. And I just got so I thought this is the right sort of place. Just just and he and I didn't work back, work out, but came back to London. At that point, um, Brook Street Bureau, Secretary of Bureau, was sending, with a green card, English secretaries to New York. Right, yeah. So I signed up. Took a long time to come through, and I came here. Now, that is one answer to the question. The second, many, many years before, um, you know, 
England has a tremendous amount of very gifted clairvoyants. <clears throat> and I used to go to one, as Adrian did, and she was supposed to be very famous and very good. What did I know? Mrs. K, Marlowe High Street. Now, I remembered when I was here many, many years, she had said to me, you'll be in America, you'll be on television and well known for what you do. And it went straight across my head. I mean, <laughs> I want to know about the boyfriend. And then I thought afterwards, so I've got the two answers. Was I meant to be here? Oh, yes, certainly. Excellent, yeah. It seems like most people uh, have a, a destiny or a pathway that they, uh, they happen across within, within this field. Yeah. Well, when, when I was offered the opportunity to do the archive and I pulled out all the material here and I looked at it, 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 it was as if I'm looking at all this material, 90 pounds of it, television, what, all the, whatever, lots of stuff. Yeah. And it's as if I'm sort of looking at it and I think, wow. It's as if it's sort of, I know it's me, but it's as if it's not me. It's just an enormous amount of material. Yeah. So um, did I make a commitment to do this? Even if it wasn't, I'm going to do this. Oh, certainly I did. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And you mentioned archives and, you know, we should mention for the uh, the people that are watching this, um, yeah. you've recently uh, had all your, your, essentially all your files, all your media files and all your paper files accepted into the University of West Georgia's uh, yes. archive division, you know, where the Ingo Swans archive are. And I think they're gathering several other uh, prominent people in, in the field as well. Over oh, yes, yes. Years. I mean, no, noted parapsychologist and yes. uh, pe the people on the academic side, absolutely. Yes. But uh, I've got a funny story about that as well. Um, I had met Lynn Oliveri, the librarian, briefly at, at a little showing of a film about Ingo, just sort of like basically said hello. She sent me an email sometime afterwards, and it was a Friday afternoon about five o'clock. And the email basically said, would you like to submit your papers to the archive? And I swear, Ingo was standing beside me giggling because I was thinking, what? I mean, what does she mean? Um, my stuff about Ingo? I mean, what, 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 what? And he, he was just killing himself laughing uh, because indeed she wanted my material. And I first of all thought, Okay, I don't know what I've got here. Ninety pounds is what I've got here. <laughs> so yes, but it was interesting as I did for this um, for your talk here to look through some of the papers because you don't walk around. I mean, I live a very quiet life. Yeah. You don't walk around searching. So well, I've done this and that and the other. You just. But when you look back on it, yes, yeah, absolutely, big body of work. Absolutely, yeah. I have the same problem. People ask me, you know, can you remember what you did in this RV session? I'm like, well, I did that two months ago. I've done thirty more since then. I I can't remember. Can't remember one day from the next. Right, right. Yeah, so yeah, I can understand. I mean, and ninety pounds of of in weight of materials is a lot of materials. But what we'll do as well in the description for this video for those watching it, I'll put the link to your University of West Georgia archives there oh, as well, yes, so they can go direct to that as well. So that's fantastic. Yeah. Um, You've mentioned Ingo's, and you know we we have to go there because a lot of people are very interested That's in, so true. in your I, inter, in your interaction with Ingo. Uh, how you know? How did I meet him? Yeah, how did uh, you first meet Ingo? That, I'm interested that, in that one. That um that is sort of the beginning of my parapsychology experiment, ghost hunting. Let's call it ghost hunting. Okay. Um, somebody called me. I don't know how I met her. Uh, Doctor Michaelin Mayer, Mickey Mayer. Now she is one of the the top people in the field of experiments. Anyway, she called me and said, would you like to go on a sort of, I don't know what she called it, experiment. Mm -hmm. And I went, okay, fine. Um, she said, well, you've got to be at Penn Station at a certain time and somebody will give you a ticket. Okay, went there, got a ticket down to Philadelphia. Now, for the younger people, it's gonna be hard to imagine. There was no internet, <laughs> no looking up anything. You couldn't go on your little phone, not that I would have done, but went out in the middle of the country. There were a couple of people there. We went out in the middle of the night to something called the General Wayne Inn. Okay, yep. And it was, I, I loved working with Mickey because she did the experiments. And that's something I've got in common with Ingo. He says, he doesn't do experiments unless it's properly controlled. It's yes. a proper thing, whatever, any case. So um, what happens, and this might be interesting people, when somebody feels they've got a haunted place, the parapsychologist, first of all, gives them a psychological test because, um, but if that seems to be all right, then they, somebody draws a blueprint 
floor plan of every single place in the, and then you, she, she puts it um, sensitives and skeptics, half and half. I mean, these things don't exist anymore, but say half a dozen of each. Yeah. And what you get, you're given the floor plan as you're about to enter the building and the person with you is a blind person. I mean, blind in as much as they don't know anything. So you can't pick up little sort of, you know, you can't. And I walked through this place, it, it was big, it's, it's a big place. And there was one room called, it was either the, the PO room or the post office room. I walked into the room, I felt as if I got flu. I walked out, I was fine, anything is back with some So went through the whole building and on about the second floor, there was an office at the back and it just felt, I mean, it all felt a bit strange and the office felt a bit strange. In any case, we'll come back to that. Went down into the cellar. Now this was a very, very 17 whatever and earth, it was earth. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't a finished cellar. Yeah. Walked about two steps down the little wooden step and I thought, oh, that's funny. There's a soldier all by himself hiding there, looking very, very frightened. Okay, so I wrote that on my little whatever. Um, next morning, everybody talked about what they got. Bingo. <laughs> the soldier was the most seen person of many, many, many ghosts there. Yeah. Uh, and that actually, if anybody's interested, is in Unsolved Mysteries Season 1, Episode 7. You can still see that. So after that, um, any experiment Mickey had, I was always invited to. And... Yeah. Uh, as far as I know, and again, this is going to sound very big headed. Sorry, forget I'm English for a moment. Um, I was her top scorer always. And let's fast forward on January the 20th, 1996. She said, Come on down, I want you to, I don't know, meet somebody. Okay, off I went. Now, I had no idea who Ingo was. So we went to his place. He lived in a converted warehouse, and each floor was an apartment. It was basically an empty space. And I don't really drink, but then we had a couple of glasses of champagne because I didn't know what it was there for. Nobody said you're going to do experiments. So then they said, oh, well, we want you to walk around. There's a floor. Didn't say anything about it. So walked in this very big floor, walked around, and I just walk at a normal pace. Oh, and that's another thing. I don't do any preparation. Some people, okay. yeah. uh, they fast or I don't. And yeah. I walk at a perfectly normal pace. And the top left-hand corner by the window I got a sense of loud music, of course, you, the place was empty, and that somebody had died in the kitchen. <clears throat> Came back down afterwards, and Ingo said that part of the, one of his tenants had had a jukebox there. Uh -huh. So, I mean, it, it's so that's how I started. I mean, I sort of earned my place at the table. <laughs> and then he started to invite me around, and we saw. I saw him from then until about 2003, 2004, yeah. long time. And I spent a lot of time with him, but as a friend, he called me his girlfriend. Well, okay, <laughs> an honorary title, you understand. <laughs> yes, yes. Excellent, excellent. And uh, I know, you know, because we had a previous chat that you did several projects working for you as well. Yes. And uh, one of the ones that I've seen, and I, I might be publishing uh in some format soon i'm just i've literally just got another packet of information on it is the uh an egypt project looking at oh well and sphinx i've got stuff to tell you <laughs> excellent stuff to tell you oh have i got stuff to tell you yes of course i have okay now um it's necessary for people to understand my my friendship with ingo it wasn't based on we're going to do experiments he just sort of probably said, you know, come down on whichever day, and then he would say that there and said, do, do you want to sort of do something? I mean, he didn't, yeah. now we're going to sit here and do an experiment. It wasn't like that. Mm -hmm. So he sat down at whatever time it was. Actually, we've got the time here, um, November the 2nd, 1996. Um, sat down, and he was giving me coordinates, but I'm, I'm, way ahead i can see sand he said we can see something else so, yeah i can see a pyramid well, can you go inside and then do you want the whole long story or shall, shall I yeah come yeah my my you know the listeners would be fascinated with this Absolutely. okay i said i haven't gone through across the page but anyways go into the first room and it was a big oval now all the way around there was sort of it's very difficult to explain them um not sort of Let's call them mirrors. They weren't really mirrors. Mm -hmm. It sort of vibrated. Oh, let me tell you another thing. This, your, I think your viewers will find they probably know this. 
Now, when you're into that altered state, you don't feel as if you're in an altered state and you know exactly what you're looking at, but to get the words out of your mouth, left or right hand brain, very difficult. So he kept sort of getting, so I had a sense that one was being watched, mm-hmm. yep. not seeing anything. Then he said, well, um, can you see a sort of passageway? So I, so to speak, went to the other end. I said, well, there's, there's an opening here, but it's full of rubble. He said, can you go through it? Oh, sure, whisk. And then I'm in another room. Now the other room, um, it was full of sarcophagi without the tops on. So I looked inside and had a very, I've got all the diagrams here, described all the, what they were wearing. Yeah. And, but then I got more of a sense of um, a presence. Yeah. But also at the same time, I haven't sort of gone all through my notes, but I, I paraphrase this as best I can. Um, I got a sense that there was energy there. Yeah. And this was sort of, headquarters and that on the top of the every hill mountain whatever there was one of these sources but this was sort of headquarters and i was being watched so to speak but there was nothing hostile about it Mm. so that very very shortly is my experiment but bear in mind what i've just said years later 2018, <laughs> I won't read it all verbatim, physicists, St. Petersburg, Russia, not Flower, have, have this quite, quite, can collected and, i oh, sorry, the results said basically they realize that the Great Pyramid had electromagnetic properties and they so on and so on. And basically they say there's a lot of energy there. Very, and I thought, I told you so. I told you that years ago. <laughs> and then, you know, but a lot of people, I understand when I say, well, I went in and I saw energy fields, and yeah. they're going to think, yes, well, what has she been drinking? I don't drink. Um, <laughs> but when you show them this, yes, well, not just me. Um, uh, gives them something to think about. Absolutely, there's definitely a lot going on at the pyramids. Yeah. And. Um, as part of the whole project, I've collected quite a lot of what, you know, Ingo's research on that because he did, he did extensive research because essentially, you, he, uh, and I think the target you worked, he was looking for, there was a fabled uh, Atlantean Hall of Records underneath the, the pyramids in the Sphinx area and that's what he was mm-hmm. looking for. And he actually travelled to uh, to Egypt and he went yes. inside the pyramids yeah. and yeah. all that kind of stuff. And in fact, I, I recently just this week got his... I think a 37 page remote viewing session that he did live at the pyramids. Well, this is, I mean, pages. Somebody said to me, a friend of his, you know, he has an avalanche of words. Yeah. I mean, yeah. this is it. Now, what I don't, oh, yes, there's more to this. What I, and I didn't know it was an experiment with other people, but I realized afterwards, I told afterwards, I was one of five people exactly the same time doing exactly the same thing. Now, what I don't have here, somebody put together, tabulated it, you know, mathematically, whatever. Okay. And, the, the upshot was that um, about everybody, I don't know who the other people were, everybody got something similar, yeah. but only one person got everything. Okay, yeah. Mm. I, no, I, I, and I, I, think, I think I probably have that same report. I have the, yeah. uh, it's almost like a four page summary report. Yes, 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 and at the back, yeah. it doesn't give people's initials, but I know what I saw and I could that's work out which which I was. Right, and, that's um, right, yes. It, it, was, it was very, very interesting. It was, um, it was, but again, for those people who, um, let's say, revere Ingo, and we give their eye teeth to so have had time with it, that wasn't like it was. It was just friendly. Do you want to do this? Okay, fine. I mean, and but 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 I never asked Ingo for anything. I never said afterwards, well, how did I do? I didn't. I just never, never did. And it must have worked for both of us because I saw a lot of him. Yes, yeah, absolutely. And that's a fantastic report. And as I said, I'll I'm hoping to compile it all together because I have lots of uh, additional information as well coming from SRI when they went to Egypt and they were also looking for the Hall of Records as well. So I'll, I'll put all the, the whole thing together and publish that for people. Well, 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 if you've got my archive, you probably got all my scribbly um, diagrams of pages and pages of 
scribbly. That's the one thing I I haven't got yet. I what I have is like a, a summary, and it's a it's like a textual summary over four oh, or five pages. Yes, yes. Volumes of a young man. Okay, I'll I'll let, I'll let you have those. Um, yeah, that'd be fantastic. That, I did that, that would... straight afterwards. He, he asked me just to um to you know draw little diagrams. Yes. Yeah. There's, there's yeah. a rat in there as well. <laughs> Oh, never mind. I mean, I, I don't mean a rat. Uh, I mean, <laughs> and in uh, you know, because I, I, I've personally, and literally, I well, I've, uh, only a couple of uh, around about eight weeks ago, just come back from a visit to the pyramids again. Did you have oh. you ever visited there in 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 real no, life physical? But there's there's something here in Ingo's writing. This isn't of this earth. Yeah. On, on my piece of paper that I was, I was uh, no, I haven't, I haven't. Um, I would like to. In fact, I lived in Greece for two years, and I can't imagine why I didn't go down because it was just uh, on the way. Yeah, but yeah. I, I didn't. Yeah, it's an amazing place. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, to add to your feedback as well, over the last, I think, couple of years, uh, they've they they've done even more research now using uh, I can't remember what devices. It's some kind of new funky device, and they have had have actually found a a void or space in the Great Pyramid, which is around about eighty meters long. So it's a very big room there and they just haven't had well they haven't had the authority to go in and see what's there yet but well, I've, are... just them, I've just told them what's there <laughs> <laughs> they are finding spaces so yeah you guys you know with your report you did all those years ago you were finding stuff way before science was finding it well, well that, that's the whole point it's got to be before yeah. or nothing that you could have possibly looked up or known otherwise like, like the ghost hunts i mean I've always got to have no knowledge because if you have, that doesn't count. And I'm very, very strict for myself. I've got very strict rules for me. Yeah. And um, there can be nothing that one knows logically. <laughs> yeah, excellent. So that, that is, but also the film that I'm part of, which is out, The Cavalian, yes. which is out and it's mentioned on my website. Um, that is also supposedly based on Egyptian philosophies. That's right. Yes. Part, yeah. part of, I think you've seen it. Part of it is shot in Egypt as well. Yeah. So the, I've, I've got this there's something with me in Egypt, even though I haven't been there yet. It is an amazing place. Yeah, I've been there twice now, and uh, I'm probably going back again next year as well. I'm going to Luxor next year to the to the temples. Ah. Yeah. yeah. Which year did you visit Ingo? Uh, I visited Ingo. Uh, I think it was 2011. I think. Oh, then he was already not well at that time. Yeah, yeah, he was. Oh, no, he was. He was, he was quite was, weak at that stage. And he became very, very reclusive. He didn't want to see even his best friends. He was, um, he was not at all well. Yes, yes, yes. He, he was. Uh, yeah, he was a bit frail. Um, so I, I only spent. You know, I was. He did invite me to stay at his for a week. Hmm. Um, but Bob towed me because I conversed with Bob a lot of the time. Yes, but um, Bob, you're a lovely man, lovely man. I yeah, he, I, I miss him greatly. We had some yeah. great conversations. And um, he, you know, he was telling me Inga was frail and he was saying, look, if you really want to meet, um, it should be sooner rather than later. So he was hinting. Um, so I ranged, but I, you know, I, I knew he was ill. So I was like, I can't put myself on you and stay at, you, at yours. No, so, no, 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 no. Yeah, I stayed at a hotel, and and I and after I saw how frail he was as well, I I left it. I was meant to be there for three days, but I I cut it to the one day because I, I exactly because he 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 really wasn't up to it. By yeah, that. I didn't want to impose impose no. on on him, but it, you know, for me, it was a fantastic experience. Um, even more so with the art, because, you know, I'm a, I'm a graphic designer, artist, and photographer. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, his artwork, it was... And I saw him paint a lot of those. Oh, wow, that must, that must just, have been just interesting. Just out and he'd be busy painting. Um, uh, Feminine Rising, I saw him paint. It was just... Um, because we sort of... Um, one might imagine, if you didn't know Ingo, um, that we were always talking about, you know... Um, I don't know extraterrestrials or whatever we were not <laughs> we were just <laughs> quietly hanging out yes yeah. sometimes not, I mean, he was painting and i was just sort of sitting there go out to dinner or have a cup of tea it was extremely relaxed yes yeah but watching him painting was um yeah yeah that must have been must have been an experience yeah absolutely yes yeah. yes it was um yeah 
Oh, we socialized and, a lot as well. I mean, he... Um, the dinner parties. They're, you, he did, he did. Rang, renowned for the dinner parties. Oh, yes, he did wonderful dinner parties. Not often, not often. Yeah. But when he did, oh, he was superb. Wonderful <laughs> cook. And also all his china and glassware came from the SS France. It was all, it was just, just he put together gorgeous. I got pictures, wow. beautiful, beautiful tables. And once in a while, he loved giving dinner parties. They were lovely ones of yeah. my mother and me and Ellie, his niece and a couple of other people um, at Christmases there. Oh, yeah. excellent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Birthdays and Thanksgivings, yeah. Yeah, as being in, being the person from the UK and you know, mm. being a cook myself, I I'm I'm just shocked when I hear that like Ingo gave um, and other people I guess living in New York give these dinner parties and they cook meals and you don't have like big huge ovens and cookers. Oh, like, there isn't any ovens at all. I mean, yeah, he, yeah. He, he a two one. burner hob. Yes, yes, exactly. And if he really had to, he borrowed somebody's oven from downstairs. But okay, yeah. and yeah, he was. Um, he was extraordinarily gifted in many different ways. But again, to get back to my friendship with him. Um, now, did he once in a while, and one doesn't exactly remember the words, uh, sort of imply that he was wonderful and magnificent, extraordinary, whatever. Well, yeah, he did. But the thing is, is he was. I mean, he was. If he said he was the best and most one, I consider him the Leonardo da Vinci. Um, he was the Michelangelo of the field. Yeah. There was only Ingo. And his field. Yeah. Like Edward Casey, there are people in every field. There's just one off. Yes. And yes. he was the one off. He I think was so the too. one off. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we we're talking about some projects you were with Ingo, and you know, we have to talk about the moon projects as well. Oh, because, yes, yes, yes. Because the there's huge fascination in that, especially with Ingo's penetration book that's on its second release now with the extra mars stuff now you worked you worked some some moon projects for ringo didn't you in well, one, i mean 19... we were talking about going through this because you said well you hadn't really found anything in the archives and i went find my archives i don't even, you can even read i just got this one little bit of paper yes and i thought okay what's that but i realized well, this was it he gave me i think i'll tell you how casual it was as far as i was concerned mm -hmm. he was sitting there at his table and he said um, sort of, do you want to go to the moon? And I was there instantly. Wow, okay, it doesn't yeah. take me time to travel. Yeah. It, I didn't need court, I, I was just there. And yeah. then he says something, well, um, can you see some sort of entrance? Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go inside. Um, yes, I went in and um, very difficult to describe. Um, sort of hollow, but there were a lot of, um, walkway should we say mm. all the way through it and there were i can only call them beings because okay, yep. you 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 it's, you understand you know what you're seeing but it's not something that you can necessarily describe as you know they look like you know, bug idea it wasn't that you knew there were a lot of them and i was busy looking around and then i don't know how long this took i got a feeling that we're not welcome anymore. It was a great, there was a very, very hostile feeling. Right. Yeah. Said, um, I, I think you better come back. And I did. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then that, that was the beginning and the end of it, as I recall. But there was, sorry. Um, was was that the uh, was the, was that the work that was uh, picked up or early one more? Are yes. Like no, yes. No, I've got well that that experiment was August 26, 1907. Now I've got another piece of paper here. I won't show you all my bits of papers that I came across that had that like, either gave me a piece of paper which said I don't know it Never mind. Um, for another time, that some papers were being picked up at two o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And it was something to do with the um, either CIA or the Institute of, um, what was it called? SRI, maybe? Uh, no, it was waiting out. Hold that thought. Oh, yes. Uh, 90, May 97, FBI Center of Disease Control took tapes two o'clock in the morning. Oh, yeah. and, and it was restricted to South. Ohio and Larry Harris. Now, I've got all sorts of other papers which talk about those two people which have been picked up because they were making, I don't know, dangerous materials. Yeah. Now, Ingo would not have told me something's picked up in the middle of the night unless it was something that I worked on. Because yes. you know, I'm sure things were picked. Now, I know, and I, I can't tell you the name, I knew that somebody around him was as far as I knew, because it was never discussed, the conduit to various government agencies. 
Yeah. Um, bit of disgust. And um, long time afterwards, um, I saw him after Ingo gone, and I said to him very casually, um, my sort of uh, experiments, um, might they have gone to a government agency? He said, mm, might have done. <laughs> Which means, uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, can I ring up the CIA and I look here? What have you got on me? No. So <laughs> I, what I'm trying to explain is, it, is it, to me, it was um, uh, true friendship. Yes. Yeah. It wasn't, um, I mean, I sort of heard that he taught people to do the remote viewing. I was never mm -hmm. taught to do anything. But um no, I can understand that people who um, are in the field of remote yeah. viewing would think, perhaps they would think, well, why didn't you ask this or that or the other? Yeah. But I think, I mean, I had somebody say that Inga would tell them that everybody wanted something from him. Yes, yeah. What did they give back? And the answer was basically nothing. Um, and I didn't walk around thinking, or must not ask him anything, because... I just didn't. I didn't. Yeah. Now, would I have liked to have known how I did on some of these? Mm -hmm. Oh, sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. But I didn't ask. Excellent. And it's great that you didn't, you know, you didn't need to crave the feedback. So many in, in what we do crave the feedback, you know, and they, they need it to, to kind of verify. I, well, I, I tell you, in, in my work, um, though you bring up an interesting point, in my work and in my life, um, I'm only talking about my experiences. I don't know how anybody else manages there. I don't ask or need feedback or recognition or approval because if I did, I wouldn't be able to do what I do. Yeah. I mean, and now I, I'm going to use an Americanism. Sorry. <laughs> I've decided to be sure the real me, the authentic yeah. me. Sorry about the phrasing. I've lived here a long time because this is who I am. Yes. And a lot of people know me, um, my clients, have no idea about this other stuff that I do because it's not relevant to them. They don't yeah, know. Yeah. But so I'm sort of saying, and thanks to you as well, and with my archive, well, this is who I am and what I've done. Well, is it strange yeah. and weird and are you going to sort of never talk to me again? Well, up to you. <laughs> up to you. Please yourself. But this is who I am. Well, it sounds like you know you've done a lot of great work, and you've had you know your your relationship with Ingo and and the, everyone else as well. I mean, Bob Durant is, is oh, Bob, a, Bob. We spent I spent a lot of time just with him. Yeah, he was a wonderful chef. Yeah, he's a you know he's a major player, and uh, not only in in the remote viewing circle. He, yeah. yeah, there's a there's a larger field of what we call ufology and UFOs. And yes, yes, and, yes, yes. Uh, and Bob made a, a I think he made a TV documentary called Roswell. Oh yes, he, he also, did. Yes, yes. He published yes. many articles on on all different aspects of of UFOs ufos as well so he had a vast knowledge and oh, i yeah. met him and i know you met him as well and you know i find him to be one of the most nicest people i've ever met and that brings me to a story um ingo and i suppose bob and a couple of other people were going to go down in an rv it must have been roswell's 50th anniversary must have yes. been so we were all set to go and then literally like the day before the man who had the rv had a very serious heart attack so we didn't go but we were set to go for the 50th anniversary. Yeah. Um, but also, I mean, Bob was mostly fascinated. He, fascinated, fascinated, sorry. Yeah. Um, he also was a great um, fan of Wagner. Right. Okay. I mean, he was, um, he was lovely. Yeah. He was lovely, yeah. he was. Yeah, and uh, Bob, Bob was one of the, uh, I would say probably only, you know, three or four people that we know of in existence that actually did have full training off of, off of Ingo as well in the, yeah, yeah. I think Bob's training was in the uh, late nineties, uh, 97, I believe he had the training. Well, probably when I was around, I mean, have I sent you my pictures of Ingo and Bob and have I sent you photos? Yeah, I've seen various pictures wow. that, that, that you showed me, um, uh, uh, and I've, uh, you know, at, at, uh, I won't say the name of the person just in case, but you went, you know, you all went to a wedding and, and, and everything. Oh, <laughs> I've seen those pictures there. Yes, yes. <laughs> I didn't say anything. <laughs> yes. Absolutely fantastic <laughs> stuff. Uh, I want, if I can, I want to ask you a question about your your ghost hunting because that's not Please. something I've personally done myself. Although I I have been to a couple or participated in a couple of um, experiments. Yeah. Experiments. Yes. Uh, you know where where we kind of help her help her spirit kind of move on kind of situation so your ghost hunting I'm, I'm i'm interested in that and 
you know like what 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 is your most interesting ghost hunting case that oh well there are a lot of them i mean the, the general way in which is where i started um oh there's another one um I'm allowed to use her name because sadly she died in the World Trade Center. Um, Maria Bear. She was a client of mine, but she she was one of these people who um, no, she was a day, she was a stockbroker. I mean, you'd think that was some of the most um, was about the most materialistic thing you could do. But she lived in time slips. She said she could be walking down a road which looked empty to anybody. She can't walk there because she could see the people all around. And she had a house out in um, Delaware, weekend house. And she said to me in the conversation, you know, I, I think it's, let's, let's say she's called it haunted. And I had a friend and she said, well, you know, would you like to come out? Because this other friend of mine, um, we worked, we don't work together and as much as we see things differently. I see that externally internally he sees the same thing externally i guess we went out there and she disappeared off and he filmed it and we walked around then we sat in the kitchen afterwards big 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 kitchen and a book flew off now the book was at that angle it flew off at that angle all the um candles started to flicker oh that's not the point <clears throat> i always discount the logical first is there any logical explanation for this? I mean, the answer is no. But he was also, this is very interesting, he was filming it. In the middle of the filming, we were in the sort of the front, let's call it the front room. But all the doors and windows closed. And I got a draft up one side of my arm, which I was aware of. And I was also aware couldn't be a draft. And then from upstairs, there was a, oh, I've got more stories. It was a big bang. Okay. Now upstairs, there was a mummy kitten and little baby kittens. That was the size of a great leopard jumping. Now, when my friend, Carl Petrie, interesting person in his own right, he looked at the video. At the time I got a black shadow went across and he's had that verified. It just went across. Okay. Now, that same space, that same space. Afterwards, when Maria had passed away, the house was up for sale. It's been on sale many times because people don't believe in ghosts. <laughs> wrong now um i went with a woman friend and we pretended she was interested in buying it and um i saw lights flickering on and off but old house maybe the electricity was a bit on the fritz but as we were going down into the basement the state agent said um, it's not a spooky basement and i thought nobody said it would be so um went down and she was showing us the washing machine whatever <clears throat> and there was a great big um copper Tank, I suppose you call it. Yeah. You're talking to somebody who hasn't lived in a house since I was five. <laughs> I, don't, I don't live in Central Park. I have no apartments. So, and it started to bang. It made a tremendous amount of noise. Mm -hmm. And she said, oh, oh, oh there the, the must be oil being delivered. Didn't think anything of it. Went home. That night, three o'clock in the morning, somebody woke me up and said, think about that. If there had been oil delivered, that would have been a great tank right above your head on the gravel. You'd have seen it. You'd have heard it. They'd be there afterwards. That wasn't the gravel. And I asked somebody else who knows about things like great tanks. And he said, they don't make those. So a lot of activity there. Um, but it, it shows, I said, somebody woke me up in the morning and said, you've got to think about that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that I, I could go on all day about my ghost hunting. But, um, oh, another thing about remote viewing. <clears throat> um, journalists I know or new, Joe Hooper, he asked me if I would sort of again come down and do experiments. So we got the car and drifted off. Um, I did not know where we were going because I always never do. And But I got, and this was before I arrived, I certainly didn't know, I got an impression of um, medical equipment and a sort of operating room. When we get down there, it's a Civil War um, house that the Quakers has had as a hospital. Okay. Yeah. So you, know, you could sort of call that, I don't know whether you, that course of remote viewing because I was seeing it before. Yes. And then there's another thing I'm very conscious of. If I've been somewhere, like to, doesn't matter where somebody's house, it doesn't matter where. Yep. I can absolutely revisit that. Mm, yeah. I can yeah. absolutely. And it's, it's way more than a memory. Yeah. I mean, I could be talking to you, but as I'm talking to you, I can also be, in the Ingo's basement. 
Yeah. I don't look any different. I don't feel, but I can revisit in a way. Now, another point. I don't know how anybody else. I've only lived in this head, or yes. out of this head, <laughs> to be truthful. Um, so I don't know how other people um, sense that or not. I think the way I can revisit it is perhaps a little different. Okay, interesting. But yeah. I was saying this field, there are no litmus tests. Okay. It sounds very much um, like a process I personally can go through. Uh, I'm very good at visualization. Um, being an, and I guess that's down to me being an artist and stuff as well. Yes, you know, of course, yeah. I'm just good at the kind. Of, uh, do you have any? Uh, I just wonder. I know you you've written a book in the past. You're an author. Do you have any other artistic skills that that, that come out that? Because we find a lot of psychics and a lot of remote viewers do have some kind of artistic kind of hobby. I do. I do. I do not. No, I don't. Okay. I, I do not. I don't. Uh, oh, well, I said uh, ghost hunting. I, I've got another story. I've got lots of stories. Um, I was asked. If I could do a sort of live séance, you know the old Victorian yes. sort of. Yeah. And I said, "Oh, yeah, I always do Halloween. Yes, yeah, we'll have one of those." Now, um, coming up to it, this has happened before. I was getting people making themselves known to me. I got a man, and he was sitting on a great big, shiny motorbike in leathers. He was just standing there. That's my motorbike. And I got another impression, this is really strange, <clears throat> of a great big red bushy beard. Now, you in England think, oh, so what? <laughs> <laughs> in New York, you're not going to find people with a great big red bushy beard. That's all I got. Yep. So when I got to the seance, I said, well, you know, before I start, I got this man on this great big motorbike. And the manager said, well, that's, I don't know what his name was. He was a sort of local... It was out in Flatbush. Um, I don't know, a sort of a character, a local character. Yes. Yep. And he had been killed on that motorbike not long before, and he was a close friend. Now, the red beard, the owner said, well, that's sort of strange, because he said, when I was buying this place, he was a wine merchant at the time. He had visited this man in the city, Big Red Britain, who'd come and put in, in the, the back garden, the game, is it called Coits, the, the game? You have in the garden throwing through a thing I, whatever it says yeah i don't know it's, any, it's a sort of game yeah. and he said that the week before it had broken and he had heard this is probably the man that committed suicide now all i was given was the big beard and then yeah. also i saw um i never edit in my client where i never edit anything i had a woman and she was dressed top to toe in yellow yellow shoes, yellow suit, yellow hat. It was the mother of one of the managers. So it's got to be specific. I mean, I went to those spiritualist churches in England. Um, and, you know, um, no disrespect, which means I'm going to be. <laughs> and people sort of, you know, um, well, I've got a rose from heaven being sent yeah. to you. Um, that doesn't quite do anything for me. Um, yeah. It's to me, it's got to be absolutely specific. It's got to absolutely relate to you. Yes. The yes. only person I've ever seen do that, um, actually paid money to see James Von Prague. Are you familiar with his name? Uh, yes, I, I know his oh, work well. Okay. Yes. I yes. actually paid money to go and see him once. Um, I did a television show afterwards, but that's another story. He was incredible. I mean, he talked about what number bus somebody had been run over by, and what, I mean, ju just, just extraordinary just extraordinary and I, he asked me to go into his television show I, I did afterwards <clears throat> an incredibly generous man because a lot of people you do on television shows they don't want to know about you and, and uh, he was he he shared the stage with me we were sort of doing doing work together lovely man but unbelievably gifted that sounds good is, is that one recorded anywhere that, uh, they're, they're, they're all i think i've got to i think I probably i would think it's in my archives it must be in my archive okay I'll, it must I'll be archives to... so i've got, I've got lots of other um but i think you know as we discussed i've got so much to talk about absolutely yeah i mean <laughs> we, you're, we, uh, you're... We, we, could, we could sort of revisit it another time yeah we can <laughs> definitely do repeat programs on this you know and what and we discussed this before we went live and i'll talk about it now i'll, I'll ask the people in the comments below to you know ask any questions and we can come back and do a, a further questions and answers or we, oh, call, that, it a, great. we yeah. call it an ama which is short for ask me anything kind of situation okay abso yes. absolutely yeah because yes. then we will know i mean I, you know your audience i don't know of course 
would be my audience as well watching this. Um, it'd be interesting to see if they do have any questions. Absolutely, I hope, yes. I hope they have some questions. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, so, like some some of the questions I know that they will be asking was, you, you know, they'll be asking your views on things on, 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 you know, we can talk about that a little bit now, like, you know, your views on, on, on the afterlife. You obviously believe in, in, in an afterlife. And we oh, can, 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 can I stop you? Can I stop yes. you? Yes, yeah. Okay. You've used, you've used the word believe. To me, it's not a question of believing. Okay, yes. I mean, to believe is, 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 is suggest, well, it may be, may not be, you know, you don't actually know anything. You just think it, no, <laughs> no, uh, I don't use the word believe. Okay, I yes. have a sense of knowing. Oh, but another thing about um, extraterrestrials, um, as I said, I knew again from when I was very small mm -hmm. that I came from somewhere else. Yeah. Um, again, I didn't know what that meant because I was a little person. And I was hypnoregressed. When I came here, <clears throat> and I got the sense of being from some, I, I, I could even describe the place I'm sort of from, if you like, um, with the feeling that I'm here sort of as an observer. Okay, yeah. Observer. Um, oh, I've got another English story. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. I, I, we're, we're more than happy to hear all your stories, uh, Paula. I, They're I, fantastic. No, you, you said, I said, you know, don't worry, Jess, I could talk. <laughs> <laughs> well, as I said, I've known since I was very tiny, that I drowned. Now, I, I, I told him, and he said, well, he was, um, let's call it a friend of Ron Hubbard, before there was Scientology. Yeah. Uh, and he, they had various philosophies, which I'm not going to say that I know about, but he did think we all came from other sources, and I do too. Anyways, yeah. um, I'd said to him in passing that I drowned. He said, well, what they do in their philosophy is they re hit the rest you yeah. and sort of try to release it. Yes. Okay, we'll have one of those. <laughs> so mm -hmm. the time we got to six drownings, he basically said, oh, I don't think we could do any more here. <laughs> we can't do any more here. It just was time after time after time. Now, if people are being very, very analytical, I think, oh, just a moment. She says she comes from somewhere else, but she drowned. I didn't say when I came from somewhere else. It's mm -hmm. I mean, it was when at a different time, different yeah. time and place. But um, yeah. Excellent, excellent. And when you spent time with Ingo, yeah, I know from the research and looking at his files in the University mm. of West Georgia, and in mm. fact, he he did a he did a session on me once. He was very into oh. astrology. Um, yes, did yes. He, did, did he do your 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 chart? He did. At any he point? did. I'm, I'm sure I've got it here somewhere. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. But it's, um, with Ingo, when he was doing his work, there were so many um, words. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So many words. It, it, it's hard to quite, yes, I've got his readings for me here, here somewhere. It, it's hard to quite sort of boil them down yes, yes. to something you can actually, yeah, but he did, yes. Yeah. And I guess in those years that you spent with Ingo and, and you know, and in New York in general, there is is there a large kind of like uh, intuitive community, community with, with I, I know no, I know nothing about community. No. I am, I operate all by myself. Um, but as I said, um, when I first came here and started my profession here, um, there were a lot of, well, quite a few, what one would call celebrity psychics. One knew their name, they were the big, big. Yeah. I haven't heard of anybody for years. It's sort of, um, I don't say it's gone underground, yeah. but you know, the 80s, it was much more public. Am I in touch with anybody else? I've mean, the one person, Carl Petri, I'll tell about him, tell you all about him in another session, because I introduced him to Ingo as well. He's amazing, okay. but that's again another story. Um, so am I in touch with anybody else? No. But mm -hmm. let's go back to what I said about the Spiritual Association Great Britain, my sort of entree, if you like. Yeah. Getting it like you couldn't have got any more. And the man sort of turning his back to me and saying to all these people thinking, well, that's nice. I'm thinking. There is, um, it's not a happy little group of people wishing each other well, was my Absolutely. basic yeah. opinion. <laughs> I'm being polite as possible. No, I, 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 you know, because I trained in um, clairvoyance and mediumship before I found remote viewing and before I found my, what I call my calling, calling yeah. now. <laughs> calling, yeah. Yeah, I, I did all that as well. And I saw, <laughs> I saw the... Um, I don't know what to call it. The jealousy, the backbiting. Oh, yeah, horrible, horrible, yes. Yeah, for people that are on what we call a spiritual journey, there's some, most of them are really the most unspiritual people that I've ever oh, met. And, and actually, you, you used a word that I never use. Spiritual? 
Mm. Okay. Never, never, never <laughs> use it. <laughs> I mean, I hear it a lot, again, from people yes. who, um, well, perhaps not taking the high path in life, shall we say that? <laughs> shall yes. we say that? But yeah. yes, I mean, the hostility and the nastiness. So if you're asking me if the, I'm a part of a nice community, no. Yeah. But also, let's go into astrology. I'm also Aquarius. We don't go into groups of people. <laughs> and depending how much you know about astrology, 10th house sun, mm -hmm. Korea. Yeah. Um, that's my thing. Um, because okay. this yeah. is, I mean, I don't want to say, it sounds pathetic going to say what I'm about to say, which means I'm going to say it. Um, it's it's a solitary path. Yes. Yeah. I mean, this isn't a path you can share with anybody. Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's a solitary path. It's, um, it's not to say, you know, I'm antisocial. Like, of course I have friends. Yeah. Um, but friends with whom I don't talk about any of this stuff at all. Yeah. They, they, they don't even know whether they're going to know now they see this, but they, they really don't know. Or, I, I mean, I couldn't tell you amongst the people that I know how many people, let's use your word, believe in what I do. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't ask them. I don't mind. <laughs> Whatever. I mean, I think if they thought I was um, some sort of crazy charlatan, they probably wouldn't be my friend. But... Yeah. Yeah. I, do, am I in touch with anybody remotely in the field? No. But with your time with Ingo, I guess you you met some of the people that you know were were drawn towards Ingo at the time, Bob and some people we can't mention. And and well, I mean, Co Colin Wilson was there. Yeah, um, yeah. John Keel was there. Crisco was there. Um, yeah, yeah. Excellent. That must be nice meeting some of those people as well. I, I would guess. In the, um, Yes, it was sort of in, in, a, in a sort of um, party sort of situation. Yes. Yes. I mean, again, nobody's saying, oh, you're so and so. And it is, <laughs> again, I, I, I relaxed, friendly. Yeah. And I think being Aquarian, that kind of classic, I don't do any sort of hero worship of anybody. It, it isn't mm -hmm. so, um, just casual. Yes. Yeah. This is Colin Wilson's new book. Hello, and how are you? And whatever. Um, yeah. So did I meet people? Um, yeah. But most of my time was with Inga by himself. Or um, Ellie. Yes. Was yes. And spent uh, was living with him on and off all during that time. So yeah. he spent yeah. a lot of time. And his sister and his mummy. Mm -hmm. His mummy was uh, <laughs> an interesting person. I've also yeah. I've also spent quite a lot of time talking to Ellie and, and the family, um, and also talking to. Uh, it, it was probably later on in Ingo's life. Uh, a guy called uh, I call him Tom Tom B. He was Ingo's like web webmaster, and he was his last student. Oh yes, 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 yes. Did you yes, ever yes, meet yeah. Tom? Yeah. 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 It's, he's um... he's a very knowledgeable guy as well. And I think he was the last person that that Ingo actually taught any remote remote viewing to at all. Right. Excellent. So it's, um, yeah, there are a lot of stories, a lot of, um, there's a lot, because I've done, as I said, 90 pounds of material. I've yes. done a great That's deal. Good. So what I wanted to do in um, this first meeting with you, so to speak, is um, pick up some highlights because, and yeah. I, I mean, I was literally, I I, I go deep and stuff. And, and I suddenly sort of wrote to you today and I said, I'm not going to worry myself <laughs> because if I'm going to sit here thinking I'm going to, remember all this and that and the other I'm not going to and let's Absolutely. roll with it let's yeah. just touch a bit here and a bit there and um see where we go with it Absolutely. I mean, and we, you know, we're approaching just a, well, just, I think touching an hour now, so we'll, we'll round up this one soon, but you know, we'll ask people, as we said, to ask any, any further questions. And, oh, know, I'd, I'd love to hear because yeah. I mean, I am, as I think I said, I don't look for, um, validation or I, I like to think I don't say how did I do <laughs> I don't but if people have got questions or want to know something I've got I'd be there because it, it would be a novel thing to me yeah and to be honest I'd like to know more myself as well um because you know you you coming from the UK you you seem to have a very similar path that that, that, that I've had but or, or you know albeit yes. in a slightly different way yes um and also, uh, I'm also interested in, you know, we won't go for it now because we're approaching the hour, but yeah. next time we meet, I'd also like to know a bit about the, uh, 
how you learned about and how you wrote your book, Unlocking the Secrets Hidden in Handwriting. Oh, graphology. Well. Oh, yes, that is something else I did. Oh, I've forgotten about that. Um, I'm a professional handwriting analyst. Yeah, see, that's yeah. being an artist and a designer and having a really nice cursive oh, yeah. showing typeface kind of thing. That's something that's also uh, intriguing me as well. So, yeah, uh, maybe when we next meet, we, we can... Oh, yes, I talk about that well. because that book, I mean, didn't particularly get away, but I can say I got it. I had, over the years, collected a lot of celebrities' handwriting. Okay. I had a huge... And then when I thought, oh, I can put these into a book. Now, every... My book's out of print. I don't even know can even find it. And don't get it on Kindle. It doesn't work on Kindle. Um, but everybody I used in the book only actually related to the aspect in handwriting. Okay, excellent. I didn't just put it, I, I say to people, okay, what sort of personality do you think Mick Jagger's got? And they say, oh, for, no, <laughs> actually introverted, but with the ability now and again to be himself. Yeah. Well, but that isn't the majority of who he was. Or yeah. I, I went on a television show and um, the host asked about what I said about Ronald Reagan. I said, very introverted. Oh, well, we're just talking about the great communicator. Uh, no, he was very introverted, actually. But people, people don't understand introvert, extrovert, and ambivert. They think friendly, unfriendly. We'll, we'll do that another time. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, because we're approaching there. But yeah, we can definitely go into that. That sounds really interesting. And you say the book's out of print, but... It, sure. it is. It is. I mean, I've got a couple of copies here, which I, I, I got. Um, I'm because, sure I'll be able to find a copy somewhere online. Probably, because I did an enormous amount of work there. An Excellent. enormous amount of work. And do you have any other books, or do you think you might write a book in the future before we... Um, it isn't on my agenda, put it that way. I mean, it would be... Well, let's put it away while we're chatting. This, my chat with you, and if we do some other... That could be considered a story. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. It's part of it. I mean, I've got a big story. Yeah. would take a book. Hit me one of Ingo's books. <laughs> 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 lots, lots, lots of words. Because, yeah. I mean, you know, I haven't touched upon my family. Yes. Or the fact that I knew from a small child, marriage wasn't my path. Or another funny little thing. <laughs> I thought that I was about 12 or so, that I didn't like children had that firmly in my mind. I realized afterwards, I misheard the information. Children not part of my path. I love children. Yeah. Not part of my path. So mm -hmm. marriage and children, just a sort of, a, yeah. it's um, just not part of my path. So yeah. it's not yeah. as I walk around thinking, oh, she got married and children. No, 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 it, 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 mm -hmm. it's, a, it isn't an issue to me. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, we've got a lot to talk about, you know, what was my childhood? What was the the other people in my family or is anybody else in my family with these sort of whatever it is I've got and yeah well, I've got lots more stories yeah fantastic well it's over the hour now so we'll we'll wrap this one up today and I you know I want to thank you on behalf of everyone who's going to watch this for sh for sharing all this with us oh my, my, my pleasure I mean it's lovely to have this opportunity for me as well excellent excellent and, I mean yeah, we're we're going to put this on YouTube, put this online. We'll ask people if they want to ask any questions and, you know, dialogue with you in more in future. And we'll get together again very soon and work out a continuation. Oh, I, 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 no questions about, are you afraid of all Saturday night? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I get those online as well. I mean, I, you, you know how it is when you're out online. You yes. get people who say, they all say the same thing. They're widowed, they're in the military, <laughs> and they've got all these pictures and sort of, Aren't you gorgeous? Uh, no, <laughs> delete. <laughs> <laughs> we all get stuff like that. I, to be honest, I get a lot more crazier stuff than that from crazy people. But yeah, that, that's just that's just the. I, 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 I think that that's that's you know that that's that's part of. It is. <laughs> part of yeah, who we are I and what mean, we're doing. You know, it, it's a question of. I know what we want to say. I think what we're saying is we're totally secure in who and what we are. You and I. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So if, if you and other people got attitudes towards it, uh, fine, welcome to your attitude. Absolutely. You're yeah. dead I'm, wrong. But... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like yourself. I'm, I'm, I'm totally public. Everyone knows what I do, what I'm interested oh. in. If And if they don't like it, then that's... that's, that's it doesn't fairly. matter. I mean, I, I, I think we're seeing the same thing. I'm never trying to convert somebody. I have no, me no neither, interest. In I, you know, I, I have absolutely no interest. Um yeah. So in my personal life, I don't talk about what I do. Yeah, yeah. That's fine too. Excellent, yeah. 
Excellent. Well, I'm looking forward to carrying this on with you. So thank My you again pleasure. for doing this. Um, I'll get so this much. up as soon as possible and I'll send you a copy to share around and everything. Um, and I hope you enjoyed yourself as much as I did. And I know I did. It, it was great because, are. as I said, you know, I don't get to talk about yes. who I am or what I am because who am I going to tell? <laughs> well, you have a great lot of stories and a great lot of experiences that, you know, we can all learn from. So that's, that's fantastic. And I thank you for that. I, as I said, to start with, I don't teach per se, but if people can recognize some of the things I've said in themselves, yes. I think that's helpful. I think they most definitely will. Yes. Yeah, so thank you for that. My pleasure. And Excellent. I look forward to seeing you again. All right. I'm going to...